count down nicely. <laughs> he always goes five, three, one. Go. <laughs> the bottom line is he was rich and he was young. Mm. And he was a ruler, he was an influential person in the society. Welcome to Energy Aid, a program for young people just like you and I. As growing up as a refugee and being able to go to school and, and uh, being a doctor, you know, it was... Wow. <laughs> yeah, supposed to, how do you learn more about him if you don't doubt? If you don't doubt, wow. By the way, you can't even trust God if you don't doubt, do you know that? Welcome to Energy Aid, a program for young people just like you and I. My name is Adela Chakoto, and in the studio today, I have Pastor T. Y. Nurenda, and we'll be talking about drugs and alcohol. If you know someone who might be abusing drugs, or you may be struggling with this particular area yourself, then this program is just for you. Welcome, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's really great to have you here. <laughs> and uh, it's great indeed, and I'm so happy mm. to be in this program mm. today. Mm. Thank sure. you so much. Yes. So I want to talk about drugs and alcohol. Um, uh, as of 2015, the statistics were that about two to three children out of 10 were abusing alcohol. And that's quite a very high statistic, you know. Um, mm -hmm. It's very sad. And you can imagine that as time has gone by, um, as years have gone by and the society has changed, you can only imagine how many children are abusing drugs and alcohol now. And especially now in the church, it's become a bigger issue where our young people have been abusing drugs and alcohol. What do you think the main problem is? Yeah, peer pressure is one mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. the problems that have that are affecting young people. Mm. Uh, most especially, we'll be talking about uh, young people in Malawi. Yes, in Malawi. Mm -hmm. But it's a, a global problem. Mm. Um, peer pressure. They want to be like somebody. Yeah. And uh, some, when they watch films, mm. and they see their friends outside, mm. Africa or outside Malawi mm. um, abusing drugs mm. and they seem to be on top of the world. Mm. They feel <laughs> cool yeah. and they think that's life mm -hmm. and they want to do likewise. Mm -hmm. So films, the films that they watch, mm -hmm. uh, if they are not careful and they are not selective mm. and then they, they learn from other young people from mm. other countries. Mm. And again, the friends uh, they are having, mm -hmm. yeah, if they don't choose their friends properly, mm -hmm. and uh, they may fall under uh, peer pressure, mm -hmm. and they want to please uh, their friends, yeah. and they go into drug abuse, mm. yeah. Mm. And uh, again, uh, there are some young people who are so discouraged. Yeah. Some wanted to achieve something mm -hmm. in life mm -hmm. and they failed to mm -hmm. achieve it. Mm -hmm. And because of that, they are discouraged. They think the whole world is crashing on them. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so <laughs> the, they think by using, by abusing drugs, mm -hmm. they may forget some of these mm -hmm. problems. Mm -hmm. When in actual sense, uh, that does not remove the problem. Mm. It aggravates it. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, some of the problems are these ones. Others are financial mm -hmm. problems. Okay. Yeah. Because um, uh, they think they are not able to buy something they want yeah. in life. Yeah. And probably they really see that what they want to have, they can't have it. Mm -hmm. And so they lose hope mm. and they become discouraged and they enter the world of their own. Mm. And so they go into this drug abuse mm -hmm. and uh, so many mm -hmm. things, yeah. so many factors yes, yes. affect young people today. Mm. Yeah, so I would think probably uh, the church itself also yeah. needed to come up 
with the programs in the churches mm -hmm. that will lift the spirits of uh, young, young people. people up. Yes. And so they may feel that they are worth uh, living. Mm -hmm. And uh, the world is counting on them. Mm. The church is counting on them. Mm. Their families are counting on them. Mm -hmm. And when they feel that they, are, they know that they are important mm -hmm. and that they are counted, mm -hmm. then from that time on, they will begin now to know that, no, uh, not all is lost. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, when yeah. they get that courage mm. and uh, that assurance of acceptance in society, mm -hmm. then... Uh, probably we may Help have less yeah. of uh, this problem of drug abuse. Yes, yes. yes. And, and that's why we're talking about it today. Yes. Um, you know? Yeah, we're here yeah, because it, 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 it's a big problem. It is. It's a, it's a problem. huge problem. Yeah, a huge mm. problem. And actually parents are having headaches now yeah. with their children because they can't stay in their home, in their house. They are out abusing drugs. Mm. But some parents don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> You're very right, mm -hmm. because they may not want, but you know what, at early stage, mm -hmm. they may be doing it secretly, Yeah. but when they get used. Yeah, when they become addicted. Yeah, mm. when they become addicted, they can't stay without uh, using drugs. Mm. Then they, they don't care whether parents know or, or not. Or not. Mm. And when they try to cancel them, mm they begin to answer rudely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's my time, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Your time is gone. Mm. Now it's my time to leave me. I'm living my life. Mm -hmm. I want to live my life. Mm -hmm. So that person at that point is very addi addicted and he wants to move forward mm -hmm. with these drugs, mm. you see? Mm. So proper counseling. Is important. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sure. And you know, someone might be sitting there thinking he has no idea what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. But you yourself, when you were younger, actually had an experience oh, yes. with what we're talking about. Yes, yes. Mm. You know, I came to Blanta from Lilongwe in 1969. Okay. <laughs> and uh, the, my brother, I was staying with my brother, my late brother at that time. Mm -hmm. An old Kat one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, he sent me to school, mm. primary school, mm. standard two mm. at Sochi private primary school, a seventh day Adventist school. <laughs> but I was not going to school. I leave home <laughs> in the morning and there was a, a seesaw somewhere uh -huh. at Chitawira. Mm -hmm. So that's where I was spending my time, not at school, playing with that seesaw. In standard two. Standard two. <laughs> And then I started uh, using drugs, mm -hmm. most especially tobacco. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was smoking too much. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, a drunkard. Mm. I was drinking too and, much. And how old? This is still in standard two? Or no, that time mean? now I had uh, grown up, I was in standard eight. Okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's why uh, I started the getting serious into school very late. Mm. Yeah. So I was deep in these mm, mm. things. I, w I had my friends at <laughs> Chitawira location. Mm. Uh -huh. That's what we used to drink quite a lot. Mm. So I was enjoying it so much. <laughs> enjoying it. Mm -hmm. so I was <laughs> deep in it. And actually at that time, we used to go uh, to the polytechnic. Okay. Mm-hmm. That time they used to show films. Mm -hmm. I think it was it on Wednesdays or there was a particular day. During the, the week. Uh, yeah, yeah, free film. <laughs> so we used to go there. Mm -hmm. And the film I liked watching mm. was this one. Uh, the actor was Clint Eastwood. Okay. Clint Eastwood. Mm -hmm. He was a chain smoker in that <laughs> film. So he could be talking uh -huh. and the cigarette would be moving from this side of his mouth <laughs> to this side you only see smoke from out from oh, the nose no. and mouth and then the cigarette comes back this way so we used to compete <laughs> i used to call myself clint eastwood you know clint eastwood as a young boy so i used that 
uh, I imitated Clint Eastwood, mm -hmm. and then I would lose the cigarette onto the ground. I picked it up mm -hmm. and then <laughs> try it again. Yeah. We were competing. Mm. Who is like Clint Eastwood? <laughs> so those films, that's why I said films. Yeah. Mm. I am. If we young people watch wrong films, mm -hmm. they, they may get into this uh, problem of drug abuse. Mm. Uh, now, for me to stop, yes, it was in 1974. Wow. Yeah, that time <coughs> I went to a church, a Presbyterian church. Okay. <laughs> one Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I'm coming from uh, a, a, a Presbyterian background. Oh, okay. CCP. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I went at St. Columba. Mm -hmm. We I, I was with my friend. I will not mention his name. <laughs> uh, but we went there mm -hmm. not to worship. We were looking for girls. <laughs> at the church. <laughs> yeah, at the church, trying to watch. <laughs> looking around. People were worshiping, singing hymns. Uh -huh. We were not singing. <laughs> just Our, looking, I, yeah. yeah. Just looking around, <laughs> trying to see uh -huh. uh, who attracts me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... That there was a particular Sunday I went there mm -hmm. with my friend. Mm -hmm. We sat at, at the back mm -hmm. of the church, mm -hmm. and then there was a, a preacher who came from South Africa. His mm -hmm. name was Harold Mononyane. Okay. Yeah. So he preached, and whatever he was preaching, he mentioned exactly what I was doing. Some of you might have. Uh, packets of cigarettes in your pocket and I had one. Wow. Some of you may have bottles of beer right here. I had one in the pocket. <laughs> so he preached and I was glued uh, just looking at him. Mm. And uh, that message touched me. Mm. And when he made an appeal in no time, I was in front. Mm. So he prayed and uh, that was my turning point, mm. stopping these uh, uh, the, the misuse of drugs. Wow. Then I came home. I broke all the beer bottles, and mm. uh, the, I burned the uh, cigarette packets to ashes. Mm. That was the turning point. But uh, how easy was it? No, it wasn't very easy. It wasn't very easy. Mm. I can assure you. It takes determination. Mm. If you are determined, I want to stop, you'll stop it. Because what happens to the body when it is addicted? Mm. You see, it, it, it is, you, you know, conditioning, you can condition mm -hmm. your yeah. body. Yeah. So the first month, it was a terrible period mm -hmm. because I had that thirst for drug. Yeah. And uh, wanting to smoke, wanting to drink, but because I was determined, I was taking lots of water and mm. a cold bath. Mm. Yeah, after a month, now it was uh, not as strong as, as, as it used to. Mm. So that appetite, <laughs> that desire to use drugs was dying off mm. slowly. Mm. Now, after two, three months, the desire, the thirst for it died out completely. Mm, wow. Yeah. And then I praise God because after that, mm -hmm. the smell of beer and even tobacco mm. became very bad to me. Mm. I didn't like it anymore. It was the body now was used to not using it yeah mm -hmm. so i was so happy then later on a year elapsed and from that time then uh, that it was died completely mm. so but i had to take a positive stand yeah. i will no more use it so even for the young people out there mm -hmm. all they need is uh, to make a determination mm -hmm. I want to stop this. Mm -hmm. And uh, as they say, where there is a will, there is a way. 
That is the truth. Make up your mind. Nobody will die because he, he has not smoked. Mm. He has not uh, used the drugs. Mm -hmm. You will not die. Uh, it's just a matter of determination. And because uh, of addiction, the, the body will be craving for it. Yeah. But deny it, control it. Wow. Yeah, so this is exactly what happened to me. Mm. For now, I praise God, I mm -hmm. thank Him. I should have been dead now. Because most of my friends I grew up with yeah. in Chetawira mm -hmm. are late. One or a few are still living. Mm. You see, because they continued with that life. Mm. So if I had continued with that life, I shouldn't be here now. We shouldn't have been talking. Mm. Probably oh, you would for you. Yeah, you see now. Mm -hmm. Probably you would just uh, have heard that there was uh, someone called Tony Nyerendo. Mm -hmm. He used <laughs> to drink too much. So he died. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. But now I'm happy. Here I am. Mm. Yeah. So it's possible to come out from yeah. this uh, uh, drug problem. Mm. Yeah. And I like that, you know, you have shared your story yeah. and you've made this um, topic very practical for someone who may be struggling in this particular area yeah, that's now looking at it from a friend mm -hmm. for example if i have a friend who may be abusing drugs or alcohol how can i help them because yeah. i think it when it bec when it's an individual choice yeah, that's i right. think it's an easier thing that you can kind of go out of it mm -hmm. but if i as a friend mm -hmm. see my friend yes. you know going down the wrong path and i really do want to help them mm -hmm. what are, how can i help that particular friend the first and foremost is to pray for them mm. seek you your secret prayers not in the presence of that victim okay. of drugs mm -hmm. so you pray secret and then counseling talk to the person mm -hmm. uh, not in an accusative way, mm -hmm. but uh, try to bring hope mm -hmm. to the person. Mm -hmm. Usually you ask questions, very good questions. Mm -hmm. For instance, oh yeah, I'm happy, how are you today? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm fine, yeah, yeah, I'm happy to meet you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, so how do you feel when you are smoking? Mm. If that person is a smoker, yeah. if he's a drunkard, yeah, just ask, mm -hmm. how do you feel when you've taken beer? Mm. Is it nice? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So don't actually crush his answers mm -hmm. or her answers. Mm -hmm. hey, oh, yeah, when I drink, I feel good. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's nice, that's nice. Then tell me more mm -hmm. about... Uh, your life. Hmm. What do you want to be in mm -hmm. future? Questions like this. Mm. And uh, how does beer help you to get there? I see. Yeah. Uh, you mm -hmm. see now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, then you begin. Ah, beer. I. So some people may be honest with you. They mm. may say, I, I, I really want to stop, but I, I, can't I struggle. Mm -hmm. I struggle mm -hmm. to stop. Mm -hmm. Then you begin from there. Mm. Now, you tell her, you tell that person, it is possible for you to stop. Mm. It is possible. Mm. Let, yesterday, just yesterday, yes. uh, my wife was telling me a story mm -hmm. uh, told to her by her friend. Mm -hmm. uh, she's a nurse mm -hmm. at Queen's Elizabeth mm -hmm. Hospital. Mm -hmm. A true story. Mm -hmm. There was a truck driver, mm -hmm. a Muslim, mm -hmm. and involved in an accident. Mm -hmm. And the leg was so bad. He took time to come here when he, he was involved in a car accident in Zimbabwe. Mm. So the nurses there, the hospital there, tried to help him, but there, were, there was no medicine mm. in the hospital. But right there in Zimbabwe, this driver was being treated, helped rather, by a nurse 
who was an Adventist, a Seventh-day Adventist mm -hmm. member. Mm -hmm. And she said to him, mm -hmm. eh, remember the truck driver, a Muslim, mm -hmm. Jesus will heal you. Don't worry. Pray because Jesus heals and he's going to heal you. And that statement stuck in his mind. When he came back here, the wound was rotting. And there were whims on the wound. The wound turned into green. Uh -huh. Meaning now the leg was rotten. So at Queens, they decided to amputate him, just to cut the leg. Then uh, the, a, a, a relative had to give a consent. Mm -hmm. So the consent was given. He was prepared to, they prepared him and took him to the theater. Mm -hmm. But when the doctor came, who happened to be a husband also mm -hmm. to that nurse. So the nurse that was helping her came, mm -hmm. who is a friend to my wife, mm -hmm. trying to prepare him mm -hmm. for amputation. Mm -hmm. And then this man said, no, I don't want to be amputated. Why? We were already here. Mm -hmm. That was before the doctor had come. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, no, when I was in Zimbabwe, a Seventh-day Adventist nurse told me that Jesus can heal me. Wow. So I don't want to be amputated. I want Jesus to heal me. Wow. That's all I want. Mm -hmm. Don't cut my leg. Mm -hmm. Let Jesus heal me. And he vehemently refused. Mm. And then the, when the doctor came, he was told they tried to counsel with him. He refused. He said, no, I want Jesus to heal me because a woman told me so in Zimbabwe, mm. that Jesus can heal me. Mm. Then uh, the relative uh, in Zomba got angry. And then another Muslim. And then he, he said, no, I was told that Jesus can heal me. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't want to lose my leg. I want Jesus to heal me. Mm -hmm. And yet there were whims. So that nurse at Queens, mm -hmm. another seventh day Adventist, mm -hmm. continued the cleaning, de on daily basis cleaning the wound. And what she did was to take the whims push them in, inside the leg, and uh, keep on bandaging it. And then, after some time, mm -hmm. you know, the leg, the, the wound turned into green, because it was rotting. Yeah. But after some time, those, those, those worms, mm -hmm. I don't know what happened, they died, all of those, and then the wound looked like fresh. The green color was out. Mm -hmm. So the wound appeared fresh. Mm -hmm. And everybody was surprised. Mm -hmm. And the darkness kept on treating the wound. Mm -hmm. And now the flesh was coming up, covering. Mm -hmm. Fresh flesh, mm -hmm. covering, until the man got healed. Yeah, mm -hmm. he, he went back into his truck driving. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a story that happened. So what happened here? Why am I saying this? Mm -hmm. This one did not lose hope. Mm -hmm. He trusted in Jesus mm -hmm. because someone told, told him that Jesus can heal you. Mm -hmm. So even for drug abusers, yeah. they must know there is power in Jesus. If there is one Bible verse that you could share in relation to this topic that we're talking about, which verse would that be? 
the verse will be Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. Mm -hmm. Fear thou not, mm. for I am with you. Wow. Be not be, be dismayed, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for I am your God. Mm. I will help you. Mm. I will strengthen you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. So that's a verse. Mm -hmm. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. Mm -hmm. It's a very powerful promise. Yeah. So those who are struggling to stop smoking mm -hmm. or to stop this thing of drug abuse, mm -hmm. remember that God says, fear thou not. Don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. And this fear thou not also means don't lose hope. Mm. Why? Be God says, because I am with you. So God is with you out there. Mm -hmm. Never think that God has abandoned you. Always believe that God is close to you. Amen. Another verse mm -hmm. on top of that mm -hmm. Is First uh, Corinthians mm -hmm. chapter ten, okay. verse thirty-one. Mm. Whatever you do, do it to the glory of God. Amen. That verse means whatever you want to do, you must ask yourself: mm -hmm. Will what I'm, I want to do glorify God? Mm. Will God be happy seeing me doing this? So mm -hmm. the cancer is. Don't speak words which you would not want Jesus to find you speaking. <laughs> mm -hmm. Don't eat that which you would not want Jesus to find you eating. <laughs> Don't okay. drink mm. whatever you know that uh, you would not be happy Jesus to find you drinking that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And don't <laughs> do anything that you would not be happy Jesus to find you doing it. Yeah. Yeah, then if you, are, you, you remember this, mm -hmm. then you'll be safe mm -hmm. in the power of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible tells us that our bodies are the temple of, God. Mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit. Oh, mm -hmm. And whoever destroys the body, mm -hmm. God will destroy him. Mm -hmm. And that is 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Mm -hmm. So, if you remember that our bodies are the temples of God, mm -hmm and that God dwells in us, mm -hmm. then we must be careful about what we put inside. Mm. That young people must always remember they are not of their own. Mm. God is with them. Mm. But that verse, they should, know, they should remember always, fear no. thou not, mm -hmm. because I am with you. Amen. Never feel rejected mm. or abandoned. Mm -hmm. People may abandon them. Parents may abandon their children, children mm -hmm. but God will not abandon, will never abandon any person. Mm. He wants us to change. Mm. And we must be willing to change. Yeah. And we'll be changed by Jesus. Amen. Actually, we, we had a teacher at Malamono Secondary School. Uh -huh. <laughs> he used to say, uh, he was our English teacher. Uh, Mr. Hartley Tsoka. Okay. He used to say, young people, life is already short. <laughs> don't make it shorter. So, don't put things that will kill you soon. Mm. Enjoy life to the full. Mm. Thank you so much for joining me today. You're welcome. And uh, I'm glad that you invited me mm -hmm. to be with you and to be the guest today. Mm -hmm. So I'm so happy. I'm looking forward to another time <laughs> when we will talk about another point. Definitely. Yes, yeah, thanks Definitely. so much. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks. Well, that is it for today. You are with me, your host Adela Chagoto, right here on Hope Channel Malawi with your program Energy. Join me again next week with another exciting topic. And remember, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. <laughs>